Hello again, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church's vlog. Today we're in the parables of Jesus and it's the sower from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 and verses 18 to 23. In chapter 12 we read of the growing opposition to Jesus and to his, his message of the good news of the kingdom. The Pharisees, the religious ruling body, are out to get him. We start chapter 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. We don't know who at house. It doesn't say. We do know that his mother and his brothers were outside. It tells us that in chapter 12. But the crowds had grown to such numbers that Jesus needed to get out where he could reach more of them. The people had heard him preach and teach. They'd seen him heal and more and more came to see and hear for themselves. Would that we could see more of that hunger today. Jesus sat by the lake with so many crowded round him that he needed to get into a boat where they could best see him and probably best hear him. Sound carries on water. And he begins to speak to them in parables. Parable, from the Greek meaning to cast alongside. Or as I learned as a child, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used examples from ordinary life, things people could relate to, things they were familiar with, to teach them something deeper. He uses a farmer in this story. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Those listening knew the farmer walked up and down pre through probably prepared rows, casting, dipping his hand into his bag, throwing the seed onto the ground as he walked. Some of the seed, we're told, fell on the path where it was dry and dusty, impacted by feet walking on it, by animals probably tramping on it too. The seed would lie on the surface and be snatched up by the birds. Some fell where there was a thin layer of soil, but the ground was hard underneath. The seed grew, but couldn't put down roots, and the sun dried and withered the young plants. Other seed fell amongst weeds, thorns, and those choked them. But then other seed fell on good ground, on good soil and produced a good crop. A hundred times, sixty or thirty times what had been sown. And Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. Anyone who has ever preached in different churches will tell you that the same sermon can be received differently by different congregations. Sometimes you just know when they're with you. You see heads nodding and not because they're falling asleep. Smiling, willing you to go on, really with you. In another place, the same sermon, you, you, your heart sinks because you become aware that your message is floating in the air somewhere above their heads because they've switched off. They keep looking at their watches, willing you to finish. I was never sure whether it was because the message was boring or because I was touching a sore spot something they didn't want to deal with. Or maybe they were just determined that God wasn't going to get them that day. Jesus knows this, and he's reaching out to those who really want to hear what he has to say. They're hungry for his message about the kingdom of God. He scans the crowd and our study says, their faces reflect what's happening in their hearts. Some are hard, some superficial, some distracted but some open and receptive. His message is for those who want to hear. The others just won't understand. This parable is for us today. How do we receive his message? Are we like the good soil, receptive? Does the message of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God sink in deep and grow? Do we bear fruit from hearing it, from holding it in our hearts? Or do we harden our hearts? 
His word just doesn't get through, like the seed on the path. Coming to church is the thing to do, but don't get me involved in all the religious stuff. Jesus is locked in when we leave. Until next Sunday. In Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, we read, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. The seed on shallow soil. We love coming to church. People are friendly. It's a lovely atmosphere. And yes, yeah, maybe I really ought to make a commitment to receive Christ, but no, I'll put it off to another day. Or maybe we do make that commitment and we share our experience to others until something goes wrong. Illness hits us, family problems come along. We see the news and there's world disasters and we begin to ask, where is God in all of this? And sometimes we're just not strong enough to cope with all these challenges. Sometimes we're not strong enough to cope with the pressure from family or friends because we're no longer living the life that we used to live. We've changed and they, they just can't cope with the new us. We're under pressure and we feel it's just not worth the effort anymore. And our fragile faith that's just been on the surface withers and dies. Some of the seed fell on good ground, but amongst weeds, which were choking it. This represents those who hear the word, but the worries of the world, the lures of, of wealth and position, and the urge to have what others have, leaves less time for family, which always chasing of something better. We want to earn more money so we can have a bigger house, a better car. We want to enjoy ourselves more, uh, socialise more. And so less and less time is left for church, for Bible study, for meeting together, for prayer. The thing of the things of the world just choke God out. The seed that fell on good ground brings good fruit, we're told. It brings a hundred times 60 times or 30 times the seed that's been spread. What is this fruit? How does it show itself in our lives? Well, in Paul's letter to the Galatian church, chapter 5, verses 20, verse 22, we read of the fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Colossians chapter 1, verses 10, another of Paul's letters. The way you live will always honour and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Questions to ask ourselves. Am I good soil? Do I receive and keep his word in my heart? Our prayer, may I be known by my good fruit. Terry Johnson, who's written the book which we're studying, The Parables of Jesus, uh, says perhaps, some, perhaps none of us are all one kind of soil because there are areas in which each one of us find it hard to be a good Christian hard to accept the teachings, hard to live as we are told we should live. It's maybe we, we can be hard at times, maybe we can be shallow, we just float on the top of our, our faith. And maybe we come easily distracted. And maybe we are good soil, but we could be a mixture of all those things at different points in our lives, couldn't we? Which one describes me? Which one describes you? We are also reminded that Jesus is the sower. The seed is the message. And we are called to sow that message. The good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. 
but we're not responsible for how the message is received in the heart of an unbeliever. God does not force his message of salvation on anybody. It's freely offered, but there has to be a willingness to receive it into our heart. So if you've prayed for somebody and shared the gospel message with them, maybe you've done it for a long time, then the responsibility is on the person you've shared it with to receive it. It lies with the one hearing it, not with you. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.